An updated body count on the 44-day war in Nagorno-Karabakh. Pashinyan addresses Aliyev. And Sogolman Tellurian faces his accuser one day after assassinating the architect of the Armenian Genocide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a Sovereign Art Sock. I am Michael Gavlak, a Hollywood guy talking about Armenia. Uh, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and click like right now and share this with somebody you know that you that will benefit from it. All right, uh, let's jump right into this. At the end of this, I'm going to talk, be talking about Sogolman Tellurian. Uh, 100 years ago today, he was sitting in a jail cell waiting trial. So we are in that 100-day window from when he assassinated Talat to when he faces uh, his accusers, uh, faces justice in the trial. Let's read this. 3,621 3, identified war dead, 321 missing in action, 201 bodies under DNA testing. Pashinyan on death toll. At this moment, we have 3,621 deaths confirmed with death certificates. We also have 300. 21 persons on the in the list of those missing. We have 201 bodies or remains currently under DNA testing, and we have more than 100 identified bodies who were identified with concrete family members, but the families are still refusing to accept this fact for various reasons. Many of our countrymen want to believe that their loved ones are, are alive or held captive in Azerbaijan. There are families who don't trust the DNA tests, Pashinyan said in Parliament in response to law, lawmaker Karapet Mchian. There's like one vowel in this guy's name. McShin's question. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. According to Pashinian, the death toll of the war is about 4,000. So, yeah, you take that 3,621, add 300 plus 200, roughly. Well, you add the 200 bodies, that's 3,400, approaching 4,000. I... Uh, Persons missing, some of them will be dead, and many of them... The reason I'm covering this is I'm just trying to figure out how many prisoners of war there are. There is written agreement on return of prisoners of war, but Azerbaijan doesn't fulfill its obligations. And I report on this over and over again. That's the main outstanding atrocity that Azerbaijan persists in. They are still in a war stance. They are not abiding by the agreement. They are the, the bad actor. And there's just overwhelming evidence that they are the bad actor. Even though they were dominant in this war, doesn't make them right. Might does not make right. They attacked a peaceful people, and now they're flaunting it and flaunting the international community. There is a written agreement with Azerbaijan on the, re on the return of the prisoners of war, which has been signed by the Prime Minister of Armenia, the President of Azerbaijan, and the Russian President. That agreement is in force every day, every moment. We should note that Azerbaijan doesn't fulfill its obligation. And I am happy to record that the OSCE Mints Group co-chairs have clearly emphasized the necessity of the return of captives and other detained persons, Pashinyan said during a Q&A session in parliament, parliament. All right, so we talked yesterday about Aliyev touring his new garden, his new war garden, his, his, his uh, trophy room, if you will, of... Uh, his dominance in this war, and some of the statements he made, and here's Pashinyan's response. I don't hate you, I pity you. Now that is, right, I mean, that's the opposite of what's going on in Azerbaijan. They're spewing hatred, and you're not supposed to hate people, you're supposed to hate evil. And, you know, people can be evil, you should hate the evil within them. And so I love this, I don't hate you, I pity you. Pashinyan quotes poem, so let me read this. I love this. These statements aren't new, Pashinyan said, responding to what Aliyev was saying, has been saying. Uh, These statements aren't new, Pashinyan said in, a parliament, in parliament when asked by lawyer Sergei Bakrachin on the matter. These statements were voiced in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, always. Now there is a new excitement there and I think there is a certain diagnosis in these statements because opening a museum and showing bodies of dead soldiers posing for photographs in this background and displaying this for the international community and their own public I believe causes an issue for some psychological support. I think that one shouldn't be filled with aggression or revenge towards people displaying such behavior but rather with pity. 
If I'm not mistaken, it was Ignat Mamian who wrote a poem on the Karbakh conflict where there is a good quatrain which goes, I don't hate you, I pity you. This is, this is how smart people pity the mad creature cursing them from the gloomy cage of the psychopath. I think this verse is our today's response to Ilham Aliyev. Pashinyan said, excellent. I love that he's quoting that. I'm going to read that again. I don't hate you. I pity you. This is how smart people pity the mad creature cursing them from the gloomy cage of the psychopath. Now, I understand there's something lost in translation. If this was written in Armenian, then... You know, poetry is really distinct in its own language. You can translate poetry and and try to get the same evocative emotion. But uh, I'm I'm assuming it was originally written in Armenian. However, the gloomy cage of the psychopath, that's where Aliyev, all of the rabid, terrorists that are behind him wanting to massacre Armenians, uh, massacre anyone that opposes them. It's, it's a mental cage, right? It's a, it's a, a darkness of deceit. They're deceived and lied to and believing these lies. However, they have a, a ton of money. And so this gloomy cage is a very large cage that devastates anyone else in its vicinity. Anyway, that's just my my comment. I just want to make one final comment on this. So Serge Tonkin, a singer right here, he will be treated like Saddam Hussein. Serge Tonkin uh, mentioned on his... I'll get to that in a second. Let me fix this. Um, On his uh, Twitter, I guess, Twitter account, um, what he predicts will be Aliyev's ultimate fate. Uh, well, this is the headline. Tur- Serge Tonkin on Aliyev. He will be treated like Saddam Hussein in time. Uh, there's a video here. I'm not going to play it, but <clears throat> uh, renowned musician Serge Tonkin, the lead singer of the famous American Armenian rock band System of a Down, wrote on his Instagram about Azerbaijan President Ilham Aliyev in, in connection with Baku's military trophies, which he visited recently. And here's the Serge Tonkin. He will be treated like Saddam Hussein in time. The military tro- Oh, I didn't mean to click that. The military trophies uh, museum in Baku has been visited by Azerbaijan, by Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. The museum's displays include injured Armenian soldiers, chained captives, and exaggerated caricatures, provoking outrage online the sense of dwindling hope for reconciliation. Yeah, reconciliation. Gosh. If one side is willing to reconcile and the other other side is just flaunting it in your face, that's definitely a dwindling hope of reconciliation. All right, uh, enough news. Let's talk about, I'm going to read a little bit more from this guy's uh, prison diary. Sogolman Tolerian. This is the only picture of him with a beard that I know of in existence, of him with facial hair. Um, and I use this because this was taken around the time he was in jail. It may have been taken from the jail. But I want to read about some, uh, it's going to be longer than usual, I guess, but uh, already longer than usual. But the next day, so this is the next morning, the first morning he woke up in jail. So March 15th, 1921, he woke up in his apartment, then he kills Talat Pasha. And in his recounting of it, this page was written on April 8th, so some three weeks later. Uh, in his recounting of that day, he has a memory lapse of the actual event. He remembers waking up. He remembers having a nightmare, nightmare, waking up, having a lucid day dream nightmare. And then he next thing he remembers is blood dripping down his face as he's hauled off by police. Um, and so he was beaten by a mob. And so it's either the psychological stress of actually pulling the trigger and shooting to lot, or it's the concussive you know, brutality of the crowd that, uh, you know, being beaten in the head, it'll cause a blackout. Um, so here's the next day. He's been shuffled around, but he's here. Half an hour later, my door is opened again, and the guards ask me to follow him. Or the guard asks me to follow him. He takes me to the same room we were in earlier. The same officer in civilian clothes, an interrogator, is sitting behind a desk. Standing next to him is a young man. 
I approach them, and when I stand right next to the young man on whose face I can see the fire of hatred burning, he turns to me and says, in Turkish, quote, Pig, how could you cleave that lion of a man, you clown? Close quote. And then my translator, who also translated the memoir, this is different than the version in the memoir, which goes, you lout, and he uses the Armenian phrase, how could you bring yourself to kill that lion of a man? Uh, I don't respond, especially since I don't understand what he's saying. This doesn't make sense, according to my translator. It doesn't make sense that he doesn't understand. Meanwhile, and I'll explain all this here in a second. Meanwhile, the interrogator suggests to the young man that he asked me questions in Turkish, but I object by saying that I don't speak his language. Instead, I request an Armenian interpreter. I'm taken back to my cell. Again, barely half an hour later, I'm led out of the cell, and this time taken to a room downstairs. Inside it, an officer is sitting beside a desk while another gentleman paces the room. The latter asks me whether I speak French. I tell him I'm not fluent in it. Then he asks me, Why did you kill Talat Pasha? Me. I reply, Me? I reply, I have killed Talat Pasha? Is this true? Yes, yes, it is. Is he already dead? Yes, he's dead. Oh, what bliss. <laughs> All right. So this is now this part right here, the the dialogue is not recorded in the memoir. But I I I totally believe it. I mean, he wrote this. This is the closest writing to the actual event, his closest personal account. And again, he had this blackout. And this is this is roughly 24 hours later. It might be less than 24 hours later. It's probably still in the morning. And he killed Talat on, at around 11 a.m. on the 15th. And this is the 16th, I'm sure, in the morning, less than 24 hours later. Had a rough night's sleep. All right, so this person, now in the memoir, he gives a lot more detail about this encounter. And there's a little bit of discrepancy here where he says, um, the man speaks to him in Turkish. And then he says, I'm not, and then the, since this guy's talking to Sogomon in Turkish and Sogomon responds, or he, uh, I don't respond. It says here, actually in the memoir, he did respond. He, um, maybe in this, diary he's just saying I don't didn't respond to that specific statement but he did respond and I think as he in the um, courtroom testimony some of this is there but I think as he fleshed out his memoir he got more detail more memory uh, and cr- um, cross-referencing with <clears throat> others that were present anyway he speaks Turkish he spoke Turkish fluently um, and he, he had in the memoir he does respond but this guy this young man was somebody close somebody close to Talat in fact in this room on the table in the back is Talat's hat um, and walking stick and the pistol that Sogomon used that's not described here but that's what was in the room and And so this young man collected some of Talat's belongings. Um, The shirt that he was wearing is, the blood-stained shirt is still on display in the uh, war museum in Istanbul. I've been there. It is an awful room because it's full of lies. You walk through that whole museum and it's interesting history of of the wars and the history of the Ottoman Empire and the Turks. And and then you walk into that one room dedicated to Talat Pasha and every word in there is lie. Like there's pictures of dead Armenians and it, underneath it says dead Turks killed by Armenians. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, it's just this oppressive room in that museum. And every other room is like, you know, interesting history. And then you walk in there and it's like, it's just different. So Turkey needs to update that room to the truth. Anyway, um, so I'm just pointing all this out that he spoke fluent Turkish. He's from Turkey. Right, he was he he's a, a Turkish Armenian, an Armenian Turk. You know, what's the difference? Like. Uh, it was his country. It was where he was born and raised, and so they all spoke Turkish and a little bit of Russian, probably, and and certainly Armenian. And the, and this officer's like, well, why don't you interview him? You, you speak the language, and <laughs> and, and Solomon's like, I'm not talking to this guy. 
I don't speak his language. I'm not talking to him. There's no way I'm going to let this Turk interview me. All right. Uh, I'll reflect a little bit on, more on this next time. That's enough. Click like now.